Hello, beautiful people of the internet. I am Chase, the guy that you are probably subscribed to, and if you're not, you might want to give that a click, just give that a click down there. And uh, I have on this particular Ramble Podcast thing, whatever format this is, my good friend Stephen Kelly, a voice actor and full-time handsome man. How are you, Stephen? I am well, thank you. How are you? <laughs> That's all you got to say, just to, to showcase your smoothness. <laughs> so, Stephen and I have been talking for the last two days or so, because Final Fantasy XV came out, as most people know. I feel like that's the, the most popular thing going on on game magazines. Magazines? Mm. No one reads game magazines anymore. Game mm. websites. And um, <laughs> I have gone ahead and played through the entirety of the Final Fantasy XV demo twice, and uh, a good bit of Type Zero, just to formulate a bit of an opinion. And I have here a, a rough little guideline of what we should talk about because Steven and I are very big Final Fantasy fans, and if I don't put mm -hmm. some sort of syllabus on this, it's going to go <laughs> all over the goddamn place. Um, we need order. Yes, yes, there's always some sort of order needed in, in my fucking chaotic... I, I guess you could call this a podcast. I still don't even really know what to call this because it's like... Mm. Yeah, I guess podcasts would be kind of rambly. But anyway, I think ramble mm. is much more charming because I don't fucking have a train of thought and everything gets interrupted. Mm -hmm. so, so that's why it's good that Steven's here, because he'll probably be able to... He'll probably be able to moderate me, I should say. Because, uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see. So I have introduced Steven. I kind of did that. But I feel like I should go more in-depth and explain that Steven is, so far, a very successful voice actor. Um, he's been in some indie games. I don't know most of the games you've been in, but I know most recently he was uh, Apollo in Apotheon, which is that cool... Would you call that, uh... Is it Greek? Like a Greek <laughs> indie game? Yeah, it's done, it's done in the style of sort of Greek pottery. Right, uh, right. Action platformer guy, game. And know. I know that, um... I know our, our, our good friend was the casting director for that. And, um, yeah, Devin. I, I, I blanked on his name for a second. I was like, just don't, just don't address his name. No one's going to know you from his <laughs> <guy's> name. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> He'd be Devin, like, you're never going to be in any, you're never going to be in any project ever. Yeah, D-Mac Double, as he used to be called on the forums. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, boy. He, 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 he was known on, I think, Newgrounds for his dot, dot, dot video. I don't think I ever saw that, actually. Oh, right, okay. No, it, it was, he, he did a reading of um, a ridiculous review someone had, had written. Oh, I think um, I know what you're talking about now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, a, a horribly ri <laughs> written review filled with, <laughs> rife with spelling mistakes and things, so he, he read it out loud and it was very, very funny. Okay, I do think I've seen that, yeah. Yeah, so, so D-Mac Double, I'm gonna start calling that professionally all the time, and just expect that to be his name <laughs> in the credits. Um, he was the casting director for Apotheon, and, mm -hmm. um, I had auditioned and didn't get a part because, of course, Stephen Kelly auditioned, and everyone should just give up when that happens. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of beats out the competition. Yeah. But, um, and then, uh, even more notably, I would say, is you won the, uh, contest for Dragon Age Inquisition. What did they call it? It was the, uh, Take Your Place. The, yes, Take Your Place in the Inquisition, yeah. You absolutely knocked it out of the park with a couple of, uh, minor roles. I'm just gonna go ahead and, uh, play the clip here for everyone to see his, his vocal, uh, splendor. We're the same, you and I. Well, that is overstating it. You are nothing like me. But we both need people. I know I talk about Steven a lot. Uh, there was a little while where I did a Let's Play series. Uh, I think in my Catherine Let's Play, I was just raving right. about Steven. Um, <laughs> I don't do that anymore because that took a lot of time and I wasn't getting anything back from it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, just like the general uh, act of doing Let's Plays and stuff. But yeah, there was one episode where I just basically just fellatiated Steven. Flated <laughs> is the word, I think. And uh, I just talked about how great he was and how cool and handsome he is. And, you know, I'll, I'll still do that. I'll do that on my own time, offline, just to my, to my friends and family. I don't care. I'll say it. That's that's very gratifying. <laughs> <laughs> like, I have, I, I have a couple um, really close voice acting friends that uh, I think it's like you and my buddy River Kanoff are... You know, two of my really close voice acting friends where no matter what uh, rivalries we have within the actual spectrum of competitive voiceover work, we just get along. So it's like we're, we're just friends no matter what. And we all play the same video games too, so that always helps. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But yes, so Steven and I were on Skype. I was doing full screen share of uh, Final Fantasy Type-0 while Final Fantasy 15 demo was downloading, which took like a mm -hmm. goddamn two hours. And um, I like to think that we both feel somewhat similarly on the way that both of those games turned out, but I feel mm -hmm, like I should start mm -hmm. a little bit, just touch upon briefly Type-0, because clearly that is getting overshadowed by everything that is happening <laughs> yes. with 15. No, no well, that's cares. inevitable, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. No one cares about Type-0. I gotta say, I think I like it 
a lot more than um, than 15. I could even kind of predict what it's going to be like when 15 comes out and how I'm going to play it and all the things that it'll have. And I feel like 15 is still, or I feel like Type 0 is still very, very fun to me. Like, I just, I went to bed last night. I was thinking, like, I'm going to go to bed at 11 p.m., you know? I'm not going to get on a weird sleep schedule with all these great video games coming out. And then mm-hmm. I went to bed at 4. I was like, oh, fuck, this game's really good. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. it completely took over my life that night. <laughs> and, um, but the couple of things that I do have here is that there is a, 14 different characters. Yeah, it's got a really unique style of gameplay overall. It's kind of, it feels sort of Kingdom Hearts-y. I imagine it's sort of reminiscent of what Kingdom Hearts uh, 3 would feel like whenever the hell that mm. comes out. Um, yeah, it's whenever got, that comes out, yeah. Yeah, it's got some tactical moments, uh, which are just sort of you walking around in the overworld and you're commanding a bunch of uh, officer. No, you're not even commanding anyone. I guess you kind of are because you're, you're telling people at a certain base, hey, go take over that base. But you're just walking around and um, just attacking groups of people who are way stronger than you. And as I'll probably show in the footage that's showing on screen right now, uh, I just kept walking into them and attacking them and they kept knocking me over. And I kept hitting them anyway. And Stephen was saying, Chase, you might want to move. That not doesn't seem to be working, <laughs> if you remember yeah, that part. That's, yeah, that didn't seem to be entirely effective strategy. I, I feel like the game told me to, and I was just being really, really loyal. It's really <laughs> faithful to the game's instructions. Walk into the enemy armies. Yeah, it was like, it, no, I remember it said specifically, like, you can attack him from behind and gain the upper hand. And I was like, all right, I guess I'll keep trying to do that. But it wasn't working. <laughs> they just kept noticing me. Yeah, generally... All of the combat in Type Zero, because it's very war themed, there's a lot of sort of um, sorties where you deploy on very specific missions and you go in and you attack a bunch of enemies and uh, it's pretty tense. It's uh, it's more tense than I thought it would be. I remember I saw an interview with the I think I think the people who were localizing it and they were saying that um, it was going to be very serious and very difficult because it was trying to emulate war and as a result mm-hmm. they were trying not to make it too casual. There is of course a casual option, but me having a certain sense of pride I opted to go normal yes <laughs> oh my god we should talk about Liam O'Brien <laughs> this is gonna be a part of the podcast now so <laughs> so Stephen and I <laughs> have have a sick obsession with um, the voice actor Liam O'Brien uh, yes, you we do <laughs> this is the best thing I've ever done already <laughs> so, Liam O'Brien is voice actor who is in a lot of um, JRPGs and just, I guess, all sorts of video games. Um, and anime as well, yeah. Yeah, a lot of anime. I don't think I've heard of him in anime, really. But um, uh, Liam O'Brien, one of the first times I'd ever heard of him was when he did that first character in Resident Evil 5, the dude with the turban who gives you your weapons, and he's like, Good, you're both here. Come. And uh, and then he promptly gets executed right afterwards. Um, mm-hmm. I'm making this so much work for myself. Now I'm going to have to splice in Resident Evil 5 footage like yeah just that guy for reference good you're both here come <laughs> this is supposed to be a format where I just put whatever on screen, but fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, anyway, and um, Liam O'Brien, yeah, one of the actually no, one of the first games I ever heard him in was um, it was Monokemia for the PS2, and uh, it was just a very kind of subpar RPG. I bet there are going to be people listening that are like, I oh, know I love that game. Fuck you. <laughs> I, I remember playing it for like 30 minutes, and I, I was not invested at all. But he was the main character. In fact, there was one time when I was over at my friend's place, and his little brother was playing Monokemia. And the main character, you know, Zero, whatever dumb name he had for that main character, was really low on health. And every time he'd get hit, he'd be like, just like do the Liam O'Brien breath. And um, and I would yeah, and I would, sh- yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I would shout out. I'd go, I go, dude, dude, heal Liam O'Brien. Liam O'Brien is is low on health. You need to give Liam O'Brien a potion. <laughs> he's not even a character anymore. He's just he's just Liam him, O'Brien. Yeah. He's just himself in every game. <laughs> the game that really solidified his his significance to me and Stephen <laughs> was um was uh, Final Fantasy 13-2, where he plays the main antagonist Caius. And um, Steven does a fucking spot-on impression <laughs> of him because Steven, uh, you know, will rip voice acting files and uh, sound effects and things like that from video game discs. And when he did that with Final Fantasy 13-2, I believe you were just kind of assembling a, a, a vocal base of, uh, or a vocal... Um, yeah, yeah, an archive. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, an archive of just all these different voice actors so that you could learn from their techniques and their mannerisms and yeah, yeah, very things much like that. that. And when you were listening to Liam O'Brien's uh, lines, oh, you quickly became Liam O'Brien. <laughs> and the, the power, the darkness absorbed into you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> it's just a... <laughs> yes, the heart of chaos beats in my chest. <laughs> I'm gonna... That's okay. how it is, Chase. Just so people don't think we're fucking insane, I'm gonna put up a clip of Kaya <laughs> saying shit like that, like right now, so that they'll see that this is not an exaggeration you're doing. <laughs> yeah, I, I, can, I, can, I can give you the audio files. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> if you defeat me, the sacred pact passes to you. When the goddess dies, the chaos of Valhalla is unleashed. The heart of chaos beats in my chest. I remember I was like looking up specifically a file, uh, or like a, a scene with Liam O'Brien in it, just to see how cl how spot on you are. And and the joke is always the heart of darkness beats within my chest and things like that. And then the first clip I found, he was like. The darkness. <laughs> right, yeah, of course, of course. It's just the funniest fucking thing I'd ever seen. <laughs> and so, um... Wonderfully dramatic. Yeah, and so, so, um, Steven and I just insert that into anything. It doesn't even have to have Liam O'Brien in it, it just, it just gives yes. us a great... <laughs> it gives us a great sense of joy. <laughs> um, one of my favorite comedians, Pete Holmes, said that, um... I forgot the quote, but he said something like, "If if that doesn't, uh, if that isn't the key that opens up your safe of happiness, then I don't know what is." <laughs> Just the thing that makes you, the thing that makes you giggle, childlike oh, that's, glee. That's, that's lovely. That's lovely. And that's exactly what uh, what Liam O'Brien does for us. <laughs> God damn you, Liam! But uh, I guess we should start talking about the kingdom of uh, the kingdom of uh, uh, Rum Brum, shouldn't we? Rum Rum. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, as we were saying, Type Zero, very, very political, very military. The entire time I was talking to Steven, and I was like, this is reminding me of a mixture of Full Metal Alchemist and Attack on Titan, purely because of, like, young people in a war zone. And that's probably unfair to the game itself, because it has quite a bit going for it. I, uh, I really was kind of confused how everything worked at first, and, and of course anyone who knows anything about Type Zero, which is no one, uh, would know that it is a <laughs> PSP game that was uh, recently um, translated and brought over to, yeah, localized is the term, the <laughs> short term, mm, yeah. um, and as a result, even though it has, uh, I believe it's called Type Zero HD or something, even though it has HD in the title, it is still not quite very HD. Uh, a lot of the textures look quite a bit lacking. Yeah, the, the biggest problem I noticed with it was that the motion blur is out of control. <laughs> Anytime you have to turn, you you get Whoosh. just a little nauseous. Yeah, it's just, it's just, <laughs> and I'm like, oh god, I need Yeah, to there's down. a huge motion blur. Uh, yeah. It did remind me of, um, the first time I saw that kind of effect was in Shadow of the Colossus, but I think it was a bit You're more right. subtle, and I think it picked up momentum the more you turn, so it would kind of pick up momentum with the with the effect. This one just cuts in immediately, so it's just whoosh, whoosh. Yeah, you're right, you're definitely right um, on both of those accounts. It, it did have the acceleration, and yeah, the moment you yeah. turn, everything is, it goes from it's, zero to a hundred. Yeah, I, I don't know, I've not seen the PSP game, so I don't know whether it does that in the original or not. I'd have thought that that's an added on effect just to show off how shiny and new they can they can make the PS4 version look, I'd have thought. You know, that's a good question. That's It's probably something they added in later, but I remember there was a period of time where I was just, I'm kind of a digital hoarder, and I'll think to myself, I'm going to do a video on this Final Fantasy game eventually, and then I'll start getting all the footage that I can possibly get my hands on, even mm -hmm. if I'm not planning on doing a video on it anytime soon. And so when I was just trying to archive all sorts of different Final Fantasy footage, I was in a period of, um, I was in this mindset where I was just, I was trying to collect all like the unreleased Final Fantasy footage games, you know, like mobile games and stuff like that that we never got over here. Right. And, uh, I remember I was, uh, I ripped someone's uh, Type Zero footage off of YouTube, and the first, the only thing I thought was, this looks really cool. Like, it was just lots of dodging and very, very, you know, intense high speed action and stuff like that. And then once I found out it was coming to America, I was like, I'm going to get that, and I'm probably going to like it a lot. And so far, I'm mm. not wrong. It's actually, it's quite addicting. You can, you mm. can upgrade everybody's uh, abilities. It's very RPG like. And I'm, yeah, yeah. I love that sort of branching path, choose your own abilities and stuff. Like Tactics and Tactics Advanced had a lot of that too, and those are some of my favorite Final Fantasy games. Of just choose what you level up. That and nine, but we'll get to that in just a minute because that is something I have on my list here. Mm. Um, <laughs> uh, I feel like I just need you in my life at all times. Just mm, mm, yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> just to make me feel much more eloquent and sophisticated. Mm -hmm. um, you should actually start. Um, you should start some sort of service where you just charge people. To uh, to use like you can record for people, uh, just you being very fancy and just mm, yeah, it's just narrate people's lives like uh, what's that I, one piece? I can just agree with them. Yeah, yeah, mm, just mm. Mm, yes, that sounds like a good plan. I think you should stick with that <laughs> decision, capital decision. <laughs> sort of like uh, 
Oh, what's that? What's that one game that's on PC that was really viral for a little while? It was like, oh, the Stanley Parable. There we go. Okay. Oh, oh the yes, yes, Stanley yes, yes, Parable. I Stanley Parable. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm just gonna cut to me exclaiming that. <laughs> and it's just going to sound really loud. They're not going to realize I was sitting quietly for three minutes going, what is that game called? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, the uh, Stanley Pebble. Why was I talking about that again? Oh, shit. You were talking... <laughs> uh, y y you tend to introduce a point and then explain <laughs> what oh, it was God. about. <laughs> Welcome to my fucking life. This so is I not have a, no... I'm changing my mind about this format. Is, I'm canceling this format now. This is... The world isn't ready for my terrible brain. <laughs> um... Oh God! Why did I? Bring this? <laughs> this is embarrassing. <laughs> what were we talking about before? Well, you, you, oh, you, you were talking about me, me doing some sort of service where I, I right, talk to right, people. Right, right, right. Okay. So you mentioned the the Stanley Parable. Good, good. Yeah, you could do something like the Stanley Parable, <laughs> where uh, <laughs> where you just narrate people's lives in real time. That would be an expensive service, but I digress. Uh -huh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's not too much else to say about Type-0. It's fun, it's straightforward. It was originally a PSP game that they ported to PS4, Xbox One, and I don't think it's on PC. Mm. And, um, the, uh, yeah, there's 14 different characters and they all have cool personalities and... Uh, Although half of them do look the same. They must be half same. of them do look like <laughs> rehashed Final Fantasy characters. One looks specifically like Snow from 13, another looks like Lightning from 13. One guy has a very specific squall scar across his face diagonally. Mm -hmm. um, who else? I feel like that's kind of the extent of it. One of them looks like uh, Sid from 13, I guess. The uh, the guy I like playing Machina. Oh, right. He reminds me of Sid, if that's the, the one I'm... T Actually, he looks... Maybe I'm just remembering him wrong, but he looks a little bit like Noctis. Yeah, he's he's got I think similar dark style hair. Yeah, um, that's pretty he's, much. He's, just he's the, the one. Hair. He's the one with the big red cloak, isn't he? Yes, he is. He's that's the one that's with the why best you play cloak. as him. That is. That's that why is you why. play as him. That I, I would goddamn... also. I would play as him because he's a dual wielder, and those are the best. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's a he's a dual wielder of goddamn fucking drill swords, and who can even argue with that being <laughs> a fantastic choice? <laughs> but um, comparing him to Noctis, that is a fantastic segue to Final Fantasy XV. Yes, it is. I, I should break briefly, and just for the sake of background, for the five people who are still listening. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Which, which Final Fantasy game was your favorite and least favorite? Right. I mean, it probably has to be eight. Um, I, I found that, in, in general, uh, my favorite narratives are the ones where... I'm particularly drawn to the main character, or one of the main characters. So, you know, a, a narrative can be well written, but if I'm not crazy about any of the characters, it's only ever going to be okay to me. So it's, it's only really if I can strongly relate with one of them. And I, I thought Squall was a very... I, I just like the characters who are more sort of quiet and introspective. Um, he, he's not uh, terribly socially adept, it must be said, but he... Um, that, that's partly a symptom of the fact that he spends a lot of, or almost all of his time in his kind of own inner world. He's, he spends a lot of time just kind of sitting around thinking about stuff, and I like that. I think that it's an unusual quality for um, main characters in kind of action fantasy stories. Right, as especially, you can expect. especially um, in the Final Fantasy world where, you know, we had, uh, I guess, you know, there could be some similarities between Squall and Cloud, but once you got to um, Zidane and Tidus and... Um, <laughs> God forbid, um, Final Fantasy Vaughn. I forgot his name for a second. That's just how goddamn forgettable he is as a whole. <laughs> <laughs> Where everyone's just, yeah, I'm the hero. I'm super upbeat and full of energy and heroicism all the time. And, uh, mm. yeah, I think, yeah, Cloud was kind of the end of that. I mean, Lightning sort of did a half-assed version of it. The, you know, I'm, I'm just so quiet. And yeah, so uh, Lightning protect. was kind of that without any substance, I think. Yeah, just um, that at face value to the, the nth degree. Yeah. But yeah, I felt with with Squall. I mean, you you can argue about how good the translation is because they always have that that trouble that it has to be translated from the Japanese, and that right. can be better or worse in places. But um, I felt that the general concept of his writing and the kinds of things he thought about were they had to have come from someone's real experience. I felt them. I found them very relatable a lot of the time. Yeah, um, yeah. Didn't you tell me when you were playing that you were sort of going through a bit of a misanthropic sort of um, adolescent I phase? So, yeah. So I, I was a teenager when I played eight. So right. yeah, yeah. That's about right. Um, and uh, but also, I mean, uh, another reason eight is my favorite is because of you know the, the first disc is just terrific. You know, you you start with the opening cutscene, which is the best opening, yeah, and it's yeah. got Libra Fatale, which is one of the best pieces of music. Like it's it starts out 
perfectly. And then <laughs> Garden is a lovely area, and the music for it's wonderful. I have to agree with you there. That is probably love. It's so love. It's so nostalgic. Yeah. That is my oh. favorite part of eight, hands down. I haven't even beaten it. That's the funny thing. Ah, uh-huh, right. I kind right. of know how it ends, but right. I um yeah, and it's funny because eight is everyone's least favorite. Everyone fucking hates it. <laughs> I'm not super fond of it, but I don't They've dislike it. They've got hate for the it. eight. Hate for the eight. Um, <laughs> yeah, that one um, before actually. Uh, well, uh, anyway, I mean, yeah. So I like. Just to go through the things on the first disc. Right. <clears throat> um, yeah, you, so you've got the opening, you've got Libra Fatale, you've got Squall, you've got Garden, you've got um, you've got the ballroom scene, which I think is one of the most endearing scenes I've ever seen in anything. Like, that, that, that dance scene. Again, the music is wonderful, but the scene itself is so... It's just a wonderful scene. It's a, it's a wonderful bit of characterization. Um, and, and the way, you know, Squall is just so kind of anxious about the whole thing. <laughs> and he, he obviously thinks he's so out of place and feels like a complete idiot and tries to leave the ballroom I, a I number of times. I think he's very relatable like that because yeah, that's, he's that's very, how I would be even yeah. now in a, at a ball. Totally, <laughs> I, totally. I like, I you know, he he right sort now. of stumbles once or twice and then tries to get out of there immediately. And I thought yeah. that was amazing. That's so yeah, human. I, I do remember that part where he's just kind of like, all right, let's dance. Uh, I'm fucking getting out of here. And she's like, no, you don't. Yes. <laughs> she falls him back in. And I, th- I think this was the first Final Fantasy that used motion capture. There is actually, you can find footage on YouTube of them doing oh, motion crazy. capture for the dance and for um, Zell's intro when he does the flips down the yeah. hallway and the thumbs up. You, you see someone actually doing that. Actually, is, is the Japanese voice of Ichigo was the guy who did that motion capture. Right. Which is really something. <laughs> that is crazy. Um, it, but yeah, uh, so you've got all that stuff. And then you've got Adea and her parade. Um, and, you know, Edea is basically Final Fantasy's version of Maleficent. She is so cool. Yeah, yeah. I think she's one of the coolest villains. And, you know, I think it's such a waste that she isn't the main villain after that. Um, I think she totally should have been. Uh, that was a mistake. So I-, I think after disc one, it does go downhill, but I think disc one is so good. There are um, four, aren't there? Yes, I believe so. I, I think typically with uh, the, the last game is the last disc is typically just the last dungeon. So the oh, fourth right, disc right. I think is just the dungeon at the end. So the first three are most of the story. Um, I remember when I was a kid, I saw these games with like three or four discs, and they always had a character on them. And I was a stupid kid, so I thought that by putting in the disc of the guy with the you know the dude's face on the front, you'd be just play as that character. Like, I thought that if you put in, like, Cypher's disc, you could play as Cypher throughout oh, the right. whole game. Which, that would be kind of a cool thing to use, but <laughs> alas, it is not It is not to be. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Final Fantasy VIII, I, I thought was, um, I didn't really like it growing up, and then now that I kind of recently replayed it, I have a newfound appreciation for it. But I would have to say my favorite Final Fantasy would have to be five. That's the hipster side of me talking. Oh, the, wow, yes. That honest... is, that's seriously, that's even more hipster than saying six, because six yeah. is relatively mainstream as opposed to five. Yeah, exactly. I no, think. like, if I really want to be hipster, I would say Final Fantasy two is the best. Like, like Japanese two, okay. not American two. Yeah, yeah well, I think the American numbers are irrelevant, aren't they? Because we call, we call six well, six well, You'd be surprised. Every, every time I say Final Fantasy two, people go, oh, yeah, Final Fantasy four, and I go, no, two. Because <laughs> oh, two that, is four, weird. and then three yeah. is Six. So I just I remember it by doubling the number. Now that we have access to the originals, they would go with the normal numbering system. Yeah. No. No. People still sort of um, hold on to that uh, that memory yeah. of what it used to be. But um, I see. Um, yeah, Final Fantasy 2 is definitely my least favorite just because you have to, in order to fucking level up your HP, you have to hit each other, or you have to you have to like wait wait get I thought, hit oh so it's your least favorite. It, yeah, it's my least favorite. I was, oh, saying, okay. I was saying if I really want to be hipster, I would say two, but I hate two. Okay, all right, um, all right, all right. Yeah, three is a lot better than two. Um, yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, my, my favorite, I'd have to say, is Final Fantasy V, just because the the vast majority of what you're doing in that game is random battles and fighting things, and it makes battle really fun because of your, you know you're customizing your characters every step of the way and you're right. saying uh, I don't know if you've even played 5 honestly not my, is that the I, I don't know if 4 or 5 is the Cecil one and the Black Knights and things is 4 that... is Cecil yeah right okay it's so funny I used to call him Cecil and then the DS game came out they're like <laughs> Cecil and I'm like oh I guess that's his name I've heard um, people actually pronounce it as Cecil before like yeah. just the name in general I've heard right yeah yeah it'd be pronounced as Cecil but uh, I think Cecil is the way we'd probably say it in the UK but <laughs> But yeah, um, I think that, um, yeah, 5 is, uh, 5 honestly has some tearjerker moments. 
uh, right, that's right, right. really that really made me sad when I played it. Uh, but mostly mm. just the combat's really fun. The music's really great, especially the battle music is just. It's just I don't know. It's really fun compared to the one in six, which is just like. It just it sounds like it like the music itself doesn't even want to be there. It's like all right, I got a meeting to go to. It just sounds very kind of impatient and and sort of uh, bitter almost. That's always how I felt about it. But anyway, Curious. we could go on and on and on about on and on and on about uh, classic Final Fantasy. Um, mm. And I would love to. But uh, <laughs> I guess the the other thing I would say is that, yeah, I really like 5 and I really like 9 because 9 is sort of a love letter to that, that classic age of sort of high fantasy and, you know, st- storybooks and... Uh, Everything's mm-hmm. very poetic and, you know, like fairies and all this yes, magical shit. Yes, it seems much that. more idyllic than some yeah. of the others. Nine, it, it's, nine is a weird one. It seems very, like, everyone I know who's played it says, play it, it's great. And yeah. otherwise you never hear about it anywhere. And you certainly never hear anything about the music anywhere. Yeah, and the music and is very really odd because yeah, it's got a lovely sort of Renaissance type soundtrack, and it's exactly. very odd that it's it just goes completely under the radar. Like "Vamo a la Flamenco" is one of my favorite songs. The band. Like we could do a whole podcast separately just on the music and how yeah, we well, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, and so I would say those are some of my favorites. Uh, obviously, really like ten. I even like twelve. There aren't that many Final Fantasy games I don't like. Um, I even enjoyed. Yeah, I mean, a to be honest, of... a bad Final Fantasy game is still pretty decent, you know. Yeah, it's it's kind of hard to go wrong unless you're talking like the Chocobo Fables one on the DS, which are just a series of mini games with no real. All oh, uh, right, no. I, I played those for a while. I, I was I was stupid back when I played a lot of <laughs> DS games. I spent so much time on Chocobo Fables, or I think it's Chocobo Fables. Anyway, right. Okay. Um, but what I really wanted to talk about was how you think modern Final Fantasy has carried through, considering it came from 8-bit and then 16-bit and then it went right into 3D, let's say 3D. And uh, as soon as it jumped to 3D, that's when everyone, even when I was a kid, 7 was the first one I played. A bit sacrilegious, not even, I'm not even the biggest fan of 7. I can tell why everyone loves it, and I'd be remiss to, you know, Yes. to avoid talking about some of its greater qualities, like the music and the great storyline and just, you know, the, the awesome plot, but... Just the, yeah. the, the hype and the fan base kind of ruined it for me, to be completely honest I, with I, you. I think for me, the, the reason I'm not crazy about 7 is the reason I'm crazy about 8, which is I'm not crazy about any of the main characters in 7. Um, yeah, I'm not yeah. that crazy about Cloud. I don't find him that likable. Whereas I, I thought Squall was much... I thought he was much better written. But I think one of the big reasons is that with Squall... That was a kind of quiet protagonist, but he had inner monologue. So you got to see all of his thoughts and his thinking. You don't get that with Cloud. Uh, And so on the one hand, you could say that it allows for uh, interpretation by the audience. But on the other hand, I I, I found it... uh, Yeah, I I thought that inner monologue thing was great with with, um, Squall. You kind of got... You got all of his thoughts uh, that way. Yeah, that was really cool. I remember hearing Squall's thoughts, and I was just like, shut the fuck up, you asshole. He was so <laughs> mean. But obviously that was, that was you know, that had a purpose. And then over time he kind of warms yes. up, and you, you see that he's sort of uh, matured a bit. But, well, yeah, um, he, he's never a mean-spirited person. I think he's just um, a bit isolated, a bit insular, exactly. and kind of stuck in his own head and doesn't really... He, he's not totally aware of how other people think. Yeah. <laughs> He's not very emotionally receptive, I guess. I, I did want to say that, um, oh God, I try to keep my these these videos to like less than 45 minutes, but I feel well, like I'm going to go above an hour with this one because we have so much to talk about. You, you, you'll see how you can cut it down at the end. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to put it into two parts. We'll see. But uh, Final Fantasy 13 was the one that sort of changed everything, obviously, because it was, uh, well, terrible. And then uh, mm-hmm. and then Final Fantasy 13-2, Steven and I are in agreement that that was actually a huge improvement um, in almost every way. And, uh, you know, minus the quick time events. But I um, thought that uh, th- there's a very, there's a sort of charm to be had with futuristic Final Fantasy because everything is so shiny and it has such a luster to it and everything's so, you know, complicated and magical. It's like the perfect fusion of magic and technology. But at the same time, with all of that style over substance, there's nothing there for the characters. Like, they're all just, it- it's like in Dissidia. In Dissidia, every character was just, okay, what's the one thing that defines them? Okay, Cloud, he's, you know, 
forlorn about all of his, uh, you know, the fact that he couldn't save Aerith. Spoiler alert. And uh, <laughs> and then Squall there's... Squall is uh, too cool for friends. Yeah, Squall's too cool for friends. Zidane <laughs> is like, I love treasure. I'm a thief. <laughs> and then, right, right, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's, it would have been cool if Locke was in that. Locke from Six. That would have been yeah, awesome. Yeah, he's a cool character. And then, uh, oh, and then Liam O'Brien voices Kane from F- Final Fantasy IV. Well, of course he does. <laughs> Yes. Oh my god, let's just have an entire podcast about <laughs> Liam O'Brien. <laughs> oh, uh, Stephen and I joke around that if Liam O'Brien went on to write a book, it would be called The Art of Breathing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it would just be about proper breathing technique to increase your overall breathiness for the sake of quality voiceover. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> that's that's where he'll make his big bucks. <laughs> but um, yeah. So for Final Fantasy 15, finally talking about this, I thought that it was a lot of style over substance, but not to say there was no substance. There was a lot there. I always have the theory. Steve and I were talking about this last night. I always have the theory that they come up with the designs and you know the aesthetics of things, and then they go, oh shit, that's right, this is a game. We need to make this something you can play. And then, and then they throw in some sort of battle mechanics. The battle is pretty good. A lot of it's very automated. You lock on with R1 and you hold square to auto attack, which was a little disappointing for me. I thought you'd have to mash uh, square, which um, I guess square, huh, that's sort of a funny pun. Square soft yeah. or square Enix, I mean. They have this sort of fetish with making combat painfully easy. And uh, I guess that's not the worst thing ever. But to me, I just, we were talking about in Crisis Core, every time you hit attack, Zack just hits the enemy once. And then you have to hit attack again, and he hits the enemy once. Yeah, you can't so like keep slash, hitting yeah. it. Yeah, you can't just be like bam, 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 and watch him do a bunch of combos. Um, I think that's it, what Type Zero is like, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. In in fifteen, there's uh, it's very automated. You can um, there's uh, there's an evasion system, like a I guess you'd call it evasion, yeah, where you just hold L one, and then as soon as this weird sort of orangey scar looking um, marker appears on screen, it's it's like a it's like a half circle with a bunch of lines through it. As soon as you see that pop up, you got to hold L one, and then you. Can and, you know, counter with square. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, the one thing I really want to talk about in 15, because as, as far as the actual game is concerned, there's a lot to be enjoyed about the game aesthetically and, uh, you know, thematically that um, I'm going to d- address in a moment. But I think that just really the, the way that the game actually feels, it's very lackluster. Uh, I mean, you know, and of course you can forgive it because it's the demo and you can hope and pray to God that they're going to hammer out, they're going to iron out all these little, these little uh, flaws. But for me, it was a lot of um, small oversights. The camera really doesn't work well when you're either in small spaces like a cave or when you're cramped up next to a bunch of trees and boulders and stuff. When you're in a wide open field, it shines brilliantly. Um, I'll, I'll put some footage here to show sort of a contrast of the, uh, of the, the wide open battles and, and the small closed off battles. But um, I think that when, when you're fighting like wolves and a bunch of enemies outside, it can get very chaotic. Sometimes it feels a little bit annoying when you're trying to attack an enemy and you're doing the auto attack and they're just kind of running away from you. But uh, then you, you can press X and you can do some sort of cool like sword warp move, whatever the hell they're calling that. And you can just like go right towards the enemy and be right next to them and hit him with an attack. And then that sort of closes the gap, it bridges the gap between you. And um, so there's, you know, there's little things that sort of make it better. Um, interestingly enough, whenever you level up, you, you get a, you kill a bunch of enemies, they drop experience points, but you only get to cash in that experience points when you sleep at a campfire or whatever. Um, you know, whether it's a Winnebago or whatever you want to do. I do love how modernized they've made it. Because there's there's everyone mm-hmm. sitting around in a bunch of lawn chairs, like, you yes. know, presumably yeah, yeah. cracking open a bunch of brewskis and hanging out by the <laughs> by the cooler with the campfire. That was nice, yeah. And and the way you get to see the, the, the lovely picture of the meal that Ignis has made. Yeah, that is cool. Rest. That's, that's lovely. Kind of reminds me of Metal Gear Solid 4 when uh, Sunny is cooking eggs. And they have, right. uh, I don't know if you played 4, actually. I should ask that. In, um, in Metal Gear Solid 4, uh, the little girl Sunny, her name is kind of a pun on Sunny Side Up. <laughs> Humor. Uh, she ends up, uh, <laughs> she ends up uh, you know, cooking a lot of eggs. And uh, right. I actually learned that they used a real, they used a real shot of a real woman cooking real eggs. Like at the end credits, they had a, a woman credited as a hand model. And I was like, oh, oh okay, okay. That's, a, that's a real scene. But yeah, it's just really close up, beautiful footage. Mm. And and uh, let me talk about the characters for a second. Noctis is dull as shit. There's no getting around it. He has no substance. He has no presence. He's just a guy there who talks in a very sort of calm and very cool guy voice. And uh, yeah, even at the end when he's talking to Sydney, he's just like, all right, cool. Thanks, Sydney. And it's like, oh, you know, don't be too excited or anything. Time to hit the road. Thanks again, Cindy. Mm. 
Y'all take care out there. Um, mm. I love. Well, that's, I mean, that's at least partly the English direction. We couldn't play yeah. it. I, I, I did insist that we played it in Japanese, but then the sub, the English subtitles didn't seem to work. So. Yep. Yep. So that wasn't doable. It only subtitled sometimes. I don't, I don't right. remember exactly when it would or when it wouldn't, but yeah, the very first yeah. scene, the very first yeah. scene, there were no subtitles, and we hear yeah. them start to talk, ah, oh, talk, 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 like whatever Japanese, and we're like, oh my god, where the subtitles? Where are the subtitles? And we start to panic a yeah. little bit. Yeah. We're like, change it's... it. I can't understand what's going on. This is very important. Yeah, that was a shame, yeah. And um, yeah, so I, I've heard the Japanese, and it's quite good. I'm sure all the voice actors are just as pigeonholed as uh, they are with the, the English voiceover artists, but I I thought that um, all the characters were very hammy, and um, so there's there's Noctis, who's the cool guy, cool quiet guy. There is um, I forget the the big brute, the brute guy, the one who's like Gladiolus. Titan. Gladiolus, thank God you're here. Um, Gla- Gladiolus is like the the tough. He's he's basically uh, you're, your you're, mentor. You're glad that I'm here. Oh God damn it, Stephen! <laughs> you son of a bitch! Get out! Podcast over! Get the fuck out! <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Glad- uh, Gladiolus, that's a cool name. He's basically your mentor from what I gathered, because he's the one who gives you the tutorial, and he's the one who guides you all the way out to the um, the, the little behemoth battle, which was really cool. Mm. Um, Ignis is probably my favorite character overall. Yeah, I mean, he's he's wonderful. Uh-huh. The British-voiced, um, very suave individual with the glasses and... Uh, but he he drives your car. He's your personal chauffeur. Um, he cooks your meals. Um, he always calls you Highness, as I, I realized when I was playing through recently. Um, when I was replaying the demo, I mean to say, because um, apparently Noctis is royalty, and I'm really looking forward to learning all of that story well, stuff. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, we we didn't really. I mean, you mentioned that there's not much in the way of character in this demo in in some ways, but you know, we we don't really get to see any dramatic context for anything that's going on. It's no, very the, much the just entire... a couple of guys hanging out in the wilderness fighting monsters so there's not much of a chance for characterization to shine beyond a little bit of ensemble stuff yeah the entire um, scope of the demo is you wake up and everyone's mad at prompto because he fucked up their car and it's like okay we got to earn the money to repair the car. Oh, look, there's a bunch of signs around saying kill the behemoth and get 24,000 gil. And you're like, let's do that. And that's the whole demo. And then you get the money and you repair your car and then you drive off. And may I just say, the main theme song of the game, the da na 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 which I'm so in love with and can't find anywhere on the internet. Yeah, I don't think they've released it yet. Yeah, the, the only time they played that was at the very end, it was such a cock tease. <laughs> yeah. Because throughout the entire game, the, the entire demo, running around in the overworld, totally silent, no music at all. A- unless you're in combat, and then it's overwhelming piano and violin, I think. But I just, I wanted so desperately to hear na 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 And they played at the very end, and then it's just like, na 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 Like some sort of ending, yeah, and I was yeah, like, no, I mean. give it to me! <laughs> I want to hear it now! <laughs> I'm so upset. Uh... Yeah. And um, but yeah, overall the the music from what I heard, not gonna lie, when I was sort of dwelling on the music earlier, I thought to myself, very forgettable. Like none of the music I heard in the the demo was anything I'd really be humming. You know, like at least thirteen was like. He's blinded by light, yeah. Like that, yeah. The um. Blinded by light. Blinded by light, yeah. That one was really good. Um, one of the few good things to come out of thirteen. Yeah, and uh, just the characters. Prompto was uh, incredibly obnoxious in the English. I'm sure he's very charming in Japanese. Yeah. And by the way, I'm not even saying that because like I'm some sort of Japanese loyalist weeaboo, whatever. Like I'm sure they're just as guilty of nepotism and uh, you know typecasting and all that in Japan. Fuck, we hear it all the time in anime. They've got the sore dakedo. They got the really cool deep voiced guy. Yeah. <laughs> Buriza. <laughs> <laughs> Steve and I have an inside joke where I was playing through Final Fantasy VIII and I was screen sharing. I was in like the training camp where you fight the giant T-Rex or whatever, and I was using Blizzard because I believe it's weak to ice. And he would just say everything I was doing in a Japanese accent. I- I'm, sh- I'm sure I have the, the recording somewhere. <laughs> I might play it now. Blizzard. But yeah, it was just him going Blizzard. <laughs> Kuraga. <laughs> and all the if rest. Only, if only I learned that spell at that point, that would be amazing to hear. Oh, yeah. Uh, what the hell am I talking about? Yeah, so Japanese voice acting. Um, yes, yes, yes. Obviously, you know, not every um, English voice is totally terrible. They actually cast them fairly well based on how they look, but it just it felt like they were just so focused on how they looked. 
and they 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 made um, yeah, it seemed like a pretty their, superficial characterization. Exactly, very superficial, and uh, which I don't like even Ignis necessarily is all mind. about being incredibly English about yeah, absolutely exactly. everything. That's his which character, which is probably why he's my favorite character. <laughs> mm, <laughs> he's just right, right. well. Let's see. I, I have a I have a what seems to be a sort of uh, bedazzled glove, and I do all your cooking, and I drive you around, and I'm always at your disposal, my highness, your highness, and mm-hmm. uh, he's just. He's, he's so charming. I love him. And then, yeah, there's there's a part at the end where Prompto, which got to say, very cool name. I do really like his name, Prompto. Um, you liked his jacket as well. I did. I, did I? I, I think mm-hmm. I liked the front of his jacket. I was looking at the um in the last scene where they're driving away in the car, and there's like a clear shot of the back of his jacket. It's like some punk rock, like, you know, the, the sleeves cut off, and there's like a big skull on the back. And I was like, okay, <laughs> slow it down there. They have made him look a bit tougher or a bit gruffer than his original design in the early trailers, hmm. I believe. You don't say. Yeah, that they've they've changed the designs that. a bit from the earliest trailers, so they have different costumes now and some slightly different features. I guess that's to be expected, huh? Yeah, he uh, he's a weird character. Steve and I were making fun of him mercilessly. I think mostly I was just making fun of him <laughs> because he's just he, yeah. There's just a part where you're walking along. What does he do? He's like ha, <laughs> like he just does some laugh. Yeah. And I look I look around like. And there's nothing there. I'm like, can I, can I fucking help you, Prompto? Do you need something? <laughs> he's, he's just, ah! it's like, yeah, I, I'm here. I can hear you. <laughs> and then there's the bit with um, <laughs> there's the bit where we walk up to a docile, what I can assume is an herbivore, and it just goes, um, you know, it's just this is minding its own business, and he just goes like, watch out. <laughs> then nothing happens. And nothing happens. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't. They're just end up standing with... around in a field. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just. I actually stopped. I was like, oh, is there like a behemoth just barreling towards me? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. <at all. laughs> and, and um, I think he did that a few times the first time you played it. There was a couple of. Watch out. Yeah. Oh, but nothing. Yeah. You, you were odd. you were skyping with me, and I was like, do you fucking hear that? <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> but Very yeah, odd. and not just that, but he is the because you have um. Oh shit! So, so you have uh, Ignis, you have Noctis. Very, very Latin-sounding names. I gotta say. Oh yes, yes, yes. Very Fabula Nova Cristalis. Theme. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, and very Fabula <laughs> Nova Cristalis names. Um, what what was the um other guy whose name I'm forgetting again? You should be glad that I remind you of it. I'm so glad. <laughs> no, what, what's his name? The uh, your mentor. That was what I was just getting at. You should be oh. glad that I remind. Oh. oh, oh! <laughs> Yeah, Fuck no, gla- gladi- Gladiolus. Um, <laughs> I was like, wow, he's really yeah, rubbing there's in. There's just Gladiolus, Noctis, Ignis, Prompto. Okay. And I think there's... There w- I think there, in the full game, there are one or two other companions as well, but they weren't in the demo. Yeah, I think that... Um, where was I going with that? Well, we just talked about Prompto. Then you mentioned Gladiolus again. You were mentioning the various party members. I, I did want to mention that uh, you mentioned that they were all inspired by actual, like, you know, their their outfits were designed by actual fashion oh, designers. Yes. Which I guess yes, isn't I believe, uncommon yeah. in video games these days because they have so many resources. They have their own yeah, fucking like hair sculptors. Mm. Yeah, they have people who actually sculpt the hair uh, in 3D. Right. And it has like a whole right. team just for the hair. <laughs> God damn it, Japan. And, uh,. <laughs> No, okay, the thing I was going to mention was that Prompto is just the emotional person out of the entire group because obviously he's comic relief. Everyone's going to be like, oh my god, I love Prompto. He's so funny and clever and he breaks the tension or whatever. But he's annoyingly uh, just reactive to things. He's just like, oh, oh my god, you guys, I'm so scared. I'm, I'm scared enough for the for the for all of us. Like He's just, the whole time <laughs> he's talking, it's just him expressing how he feels about things. He's, oh, I'm so cold. Oh, wow, I'm really scared. And I don't really mind, because at least someone's talking, you know? In between all the, the, the gruff, masculine noises. Stoic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in between all the stoicism. <laughs> at least someone's fucking saying something that isn't just completely serious. Look out. There, there was one line that I, I've been hearing a lot in the demo, where someone says, You're on fire today. And in my head, I'm just thinking, Oh my god, it's so nice, thank you. Like, <laughs> just throwing all these compliments at you. Uh. You're, you're really good at this game, you should buy it when it drops on September 29th. <laughs> like, whatever date it's coming uh. out. But, um, I hope it releases this year I would I would that would that would finally tempt me to actually get a PS4 yeah yeah I'm probably that that leads me to the other thing I was gonna say um, on the PS4 the frame rate is pretty bad I'm gonna chalk it up to it being a demo and I'm gonna try to be forgiving about it because you know whatever it's just a demo I'm sure they're gonna you know work out some kinks in the final version 
I don't remember 13 really having any slowdowns. I think when I would be playing as Lightning using Blitz, and she'd do that AoE attack, it would maybe slow down the processing power just a little bit. There was always something. But um, yeah, in, in 15, there's a lot of frame rate slowdown, a ton of lag. Um, just little glitches that, like I said, I'm trying to be for, I'm trying to forgive it for. I'm, I'm hoping that it'll be better at the final release. If not, I'm probably going to look into getting it on PC if they do the PC port correctly. I, th I think they had said that they would release it on all DirectX 11 systems, hmm, so that's good. it may be on PC, in which case that would save me from getting a PS4, but we'll see. I'm pretty confident, I, I'm very confident that I heard that it was going to get a PC release. Um, they do. They seem to be doing that more now. I mean, they've certainly done it with. They've done it with the earlier games and seven and eight, and they've done it with uh, thirteen. The thirteen series. Well, they've, they've done thirteen and thirteen too. I don't know if they've done Lightning Returns yet, but um, uh, yeah, yeah. They uh, so, actually, yeah. I don't know. It's a good question. I don't think I've I, seen. I don't it think there. they've done it with that yet. So they're a little bit delayed, at least. So if you were impatient about um, about the game, it probably were worth getting it on PS4. But it, right, hopefully, right. they will eventually do a PC version. I just, I just love thinking of my PS4 as just being my, my overall, like, Japanese gaming device, because all the games I play on it, for the most part, are all Japanese. Right, <laughs> like right. Every, because, you know, obviously in, in Japan, everything over there is all Sony and, and no Microsoft at all. Mm. Um, I love logging into um, my PS4 and seeing Ace from Type-0 and Noctis from 15 just staring each other romantically in the eyes. <laughs> as soon as I log in, they're just there like, you know you want to play us both, but which one you have to choose? And... <laughs> 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 the thing that I really um, enjoyed about Type Zero, if I can just jump back to that for a minute, was how everything was within the Fabula. Was it Fabula Nova Crystallis? Was that the lore? I think that's the name. The universe. Yeah. yeah. Um, I did like how they talked about. Oh, there was one part that I didn't show you last night because we had gotten off a call. But there's, there's, uh, you know, a Lassie that's in your group, and he like fights for all of you, and he has like the, you know, the brand or whatever on his chest. And um, there's yeah. a part where you fight another Lassie on the other side of the battlefield. And he just, he like flies over Dragon Ball Z style and hovers with his like brand showing. And uh, mm -hmm. and he's like, what is your focus? And the guy says, I am not to say, or like, who am I to say? Or something like that. And then he just says, very well. And like draws his sword and his his uh, his little brand is like, swing! And then he just crushes him. I, oh. I really do enjoy the fact that they have a lot of um the Final Fantasy 13 lore applied to a different sort of environment with different characters. Because I really did enjoy a lot of the um, the complexities of the story and stuff in 13. Yeah, I think long... 13 had a lot of good ingredients, a lot of good ideas. It was just the execution that was the trouble. Yeah, they didn't explain anything. Uh, you had to go deeper than the codex to figure out what the hell was going on. That <laughs> yes. part was unpleasant. But once I figured out what was going on, I found myself somewhat embedded in the overall, you know, in the plights of everyone in the game. But I do enjoy that they apply, you know, focus and seeth and and all the other, you know, the same technology and stuff to this new universe where I can actually respect it. <laughs> because it's 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 not terrible. It's not a terrible um, format and uh, backdrop for everything to be going on. It's just 13 was fucking shit. It was so bad. <laughs> I don't care who enjoys 13. It was so bad. I guess I'll drop a slight teaser for, because anyone who's listening in this late to the uh, to the actual recording deserves some sort of hint. But I am planning on... I have the series What Happened. I've done one for Sonic. I'm about to drop one hopefully in the next week for uh, Pokemon. And, um, and then eventually I'm going to do, you know, Resident Evil uh, and Final Fantasy and a bunch of other big blockbuster um, series, I guess you could say. And for Final Fantasy, uh, I'm going to play through all of those. And when I get to 13, the big thing I'm going to say is that while I don't like most of 13, I have to give them credit, the gameplay is quite fun sometimes. Just, you know, having to quickly shift on the fly to different paradigms and, and have to react quickly so everybody doesn't die. I, I really like the, the battle and some of the characters, mainly just Snow. Snow is pretty much the only reason I stayed to play that game, because Troy Baker. Uh, he's pretty much the <laughs> That's most... That's a good reason. That is the best reason. Troy Baker is a very good reason. Yeah, even though it's generally a terrible game, and they did a lot of things wrong with it, and they experimented, and I can respect that. I don't think that that was the worst thing any, you know, game designer could ever do. I think that, uh, you know, it has some redeeming points. Yeah, I think pretty much every Final Fantasy game has redeeming points, except for, like, Final Fantasy XII Revenant Wings on the DS. That was just terrible. It was like, it was like a terrible, um real-time strategy game where you use the stylus to make a square and highlight all of your forces, much like StarCraft. 
And uh, it was just, and, and all of your forces in the first level were like a bunch of Mandragora. And I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I played the first level and I was like, this is the worst thing I've ever played. And I returned it immediately. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, for 13, that's um, I think there's some redeeming points. There aren't a lot of Final Fantasy games that I absolutely hate. I'm definitely looking forward to fleshing out a lot of that and getting polarizing reactions from the the, the commenters about that. <laughs> yes, yeah. I'm expecting absolutely. people to say, "You defended one thing about 13. Fucking, I hate you, and please die." <laughs> is mostly what I'm expecting. No, I mean, I think th I think 13 2 is probably one of my favorites of the series in terms of gameplay because. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I guess Square is a weird company in that I've always played their games for everything but the gameplay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I actually, I I personally don't mind the fact that, that I mean, we'd, we'd mentioned earlier the difference between earlier games and newer games, and one of the big differences is the mechanics and the fact that they've gone, they've become more real-time hack and slash, basically. Yeah, yeah. Which I, I, I like more. I mean, and, uh, I'll, I yeah. prefer, you know, rather than sort of sitting back and giving the characters commands like a strategist and watching them do stuff, I prefer to play as the character on the battlefield swinging the sword you know it feels more like you're playing the character rather than being a sort of detached strategist so I, I, I quite like um, the more real-time battle system I liked Crisis Core yeah. Type 0 looks cool 15 looks cool and uh, oddly all of those are being directed by um, Hajime Tabata hmm. who yeah he, he's involved in all of those uh, so it, it seems like that's his favored or that that's the favorite mechanic of the games that he's involved with, and um, I think I prefer that that gameplay style personally. I I always found random battles that you had to do Very for annoying. hours and hours, level grinding, uh, and you know when you try to you try to cross the screen, you get another random battle, and another two steps, and you get another random battle. That would and always all stress the, me out, especially all in the level grinding. Where, yeah, yeah, in dungeons yeah. where you don't know where you're going or what you're doing, and you're like, yes, just and you go you go the wrong out. way, and you get yeah. to the whole end of the screen, getting through all those battles, <laughs> and then and then there's nothing, and you have to turn back. Oh, I hated that. I don't think you have a 3DS, but if you ever played um, Bravely Default. That one RPG made by Square. Um, People seem to be very positive about that. It's good, and one of the best things I can say about it is that um, they let you turn off random battles or double them, which is right. amazing because that's if you're grinding. Really, so if you want to grind, you can, and if you want to just stop grinding, you, that, that's the, yeah, that's much better. <laughs> yeah, and they warn you. They say if you turn off, uh, you know, if you turn down the battles, then you won't be as prepared for future, you know, yes. bosses and stuff. Yes. And, it, and you're like, all right, well, that's I mean, great. So that then you can decide, okay, I'm going to do some grinding for a while now. So that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, but, and I, mean, I always that's... do that to level up my, my jobs and get more abilities and stuff. Right, right. But it, they put the choice in your hands, which is yeah, amazing. Yeah, which I like. Um, I mean, they've done that kind of since since 12, I guess. 12 was when you could see monsters on the map, and there wasn't yes. a separate battle system. People and, really I mean, like that, because you could, yeah, you could just yeah, avoid the, them. Yeah, the mechanics for 12, very very similar to Dragon Age. Very Those mm -hmm. those games are pretty similar uh, in, in, in terms of the, the gameplay. Um, sort of half, it's half strategy and half real-time, I guess. Right. Real-time strategy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, 13, 13 2, uh, yeah, I, I liked the the, the gameplay for that one. <laughs> Noel yeah, was the I, I liked, part of that well, game. Noel, Noel was cool. Um, I thought he was, and Jason Marston, yeah, yeah, so yeah. good, went so good <laughs> in that performance. Uh, but yeah, I thought Noel and Kais were, were pretty cool characters. And, Ever and, since you um, showed me Jason, Mar uh, Jason Marsden's um, voiceover um, mm -hmm. clips, I've taken a lot of inspiration just by the way he talks. Yes, Everything he says he's, he's so confident and he's quick. so emphatic. Where every concise. single important word yeah. is pointed. <laughs> yeah, no, I love that. So he's, poignant, he's, yeah. He's, he's, yeah, he's, he's got a real kind of m momentum and energy to his delivery, which I, I love that. Um, yeah, so I, I liked Th 13 2 in, in terms of gameplay was one of my favorites. Um, and I, I, I expect that I'll like, uh, when, when I finally get around to, to playing Type-0 or certainly 15 in one way or another, I, I imagine I'll like them the most, uh, basically. Yeah, the, the thing that I was going to say earlier when you were talking about, you know, everything switching to real time is that... Uh, mm. When I was younger, I used to really enjoy the more traditional, um, you know, two-dimensional RPGs mm -hmm. and the, you know, turn-based everything. As I'm getting older, I find all of my friends currently share the mindset that, you know, fuck nobody got time battles. And, yeah, basically, fuck, fuck turn-based um, battles. Because <laughs> it's just so slow and, you know, it's very tedious and mm -hmm. ugh, just all the time. You know, nobody, nobody has time. We're all adults now and, um, you know, working jobs or, you know, trying to work on side projects or whatever, what have well, you. That was another thing I liked about... Um, 13 2 was that it didn't require level grinding. I found that 13 did, for me anyway. I couldn't get through a section yeah, without there were, spending there were five hours grind. level grinding before I could fight the next idol on. Yeah. But um, in 13 2, I found I got through the whole story without having to level grind. It just all kind of. You just play it. You just play through the story. And then after awesome. that, you can kind of. 
when you want it's, the paradox endings are much harder to get, and you have to you have to level up more for those. But um, yeah, I, I also liked the uh, thirteen two. I liked as well because of the n it's kind of semi linear. It's like Kingdom Hearts or Chrono Trigger, and that it's got a time because it's got time travel. You can. Kind of, you can go to different areas at different times, and you, you're not stuck with you have to right. do this bit of the story, then this bit, then this bit. You can I've, kind of choose. I've yet to get to that part because I played a bit of 13 uh, 2 but I have right. not gotten to the part where you really get to hop around. Yeah, kind of I, I remember there being a, a, a bit of that at least, and and you can certainly replay any section you've played. So it's it's like in Kingdom Hearts where you can travel to different worlds, and if you get bored of one, you can leave it and do another bit for a while. And I love that. Um, I think that's. Again, Dragon Age does that kind of thing, where it's semi-linear. You ultimately have to do everything, but you can kind of decide on your own pacing. And I, I think that's I, I think that's lovely. I love that. It especially has to do with how the Japanese gaming scene is, is playing out, in that um, everything they're doing is going very mobile. Huh. Playing and, out. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that, but thank you for catching it. Thank you for making me feel smart and deliberate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that uh, because everything's going so mobile and everything's so instantly gratifying and there's a lot of, you know, just people don't have as much time for traditional video games, there's um, so much emphasis on just, okay, just make it quick, give me the gameplay, I gotta play, and then I gotta go take care of my family. And uh, <laughs> I, I think that's such a big part of why everything's so automated and so quick now, because it's just, you know, alright, let's make it quick, I only have, you know, 10 minutes to play this game or whatever. There's actually a bit in um, Resident Evil Revelations 2, which I'm doing a video on uh, pretty soon, actually, where um, it's all episodic. And uh, But before that, they had Revelations 1 on the 3DS, where everything was very, uh, everything was very episode-based and... Um, it would, they would actually recap it. They'd, they'd go on the next episode of Revelations or on the last episode of Revelations. And they did it assuming that you would play in only like, you know, 30 minute stretches. And I think that's just a really interesting paradigm to look at with the way that um, hmm. games are evolving. But anyway, I think that mostly covers the things that we set out to discuss in this particular ramble. Right. Let me look here at the list to make sure there's nothing else we need to cover. There probably is. Yeah, but I guess the one thing I can really, really say about um, Final Fantasy XV is that it's really funny that you have these super beautiful pretty boy boy band people, and then you're just talking to normal tourists who just look like Americans. It's almost <laughs> like a, it's almost like from Sonic 2006 where you had a bunch of fucking hedgehogs walking around, and then it's just tourists, and they're like, eh. <laughs> and there's literally everyone you talk to, all the males, they just go, eh. and but they're mm. just normal people. Um, right, right. And uh, the particle effects are pretty insane. When you defeat the behemoth and you summon Ramu, oh. holy shit! I saw it again uh, when oh. I went to re when I went to record it again, and it Glorious. was just as cool as the first time. That was oh, I loved that. Loved and I, that. I had like turned around to look at Ramu behind me. I saw some big towering thing. I didn't realize it was him. And as I looked up at him, he started to like dissipate into red particles. And I was like, damn it! I wanted to take a look at him because he's. He was stand. He stands there for a little while after you kill Behemoth. He's just like right. You're welcome. Yeah. And, so then, and then just the, the particles scatter everywhere, and the, the land is just covered in these red glowing. It's just amazing. Yeah, like from the uh, from the Judgment Bolt. I love that yeah. they always call it Judgment Bolt too. That makes that's me great. happy when they when they remember where they came from and they all have the same <laughs> names and stuff. Yeah, yeah that's good. But yeah, and uh, frankly, Type Zero, while clearly it's going to be living in the shadow of 15, because it, the only reason anyone really got it was because of uh, the 15 demo, <laughs> I enjoy it a True. lot, and as soon as I'm done recording, as soon as I click stop recording, I'm going to go fucking play Final Fantasy Type Zero. I absolutely <laughs> promise you, it's so hard to put down. <laughs> um, and difficult. Holy shit, is it difficult. But anyway, I will definitely have Steven on in the future for other, mostly Final Fantasy-based um, videos, I feel. Right, right. Because that is the one thing we really have in common. We're enormous Final Fantasy and fanatics. And Dot Hack. And Dot Hack. Holy shit, how did I forget <laughs> about Dot Hack? We have Dot Hack. I was actually going to mention when I start the podcast, like, Steven and I are big fans of Final Fantasy and Dot Hack GU. <laughs> Let it be yes. known. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, like, the biggest ones. Oh, yeah. But, um, yeah, so that about does it. I would like to thank you, Mr. Stephen Kelly. 
Oh, certainly. For being on on my whatever the hell this thing is. Uh, well, th thank you for having me on whatever the hell it is. <laughs> we'll figure it out in time, I'm sure. <laughs> and I, I should have said that, uh, you know, your your uh, online alias is Seraphis, which is not only the coolest demonic sounding name <laughs> that I could ever think of, but it's also his YouTube channel. I'll put it on, I'll put it as an annotation on the screen right now. It'll also be in... My, my main YouTube channel at the moment is Stephen M. Kelly. Oh, is it? That's for my, you know, for my music and stuff. Yeah. Oh, I thought that your yeah, yeah. YouTube no, was I, uh, I, I, I used to... No, no, no. Um, Seraphis was my original one I had years ago. But that's not... Yeah. Well, it shows, shows you how much I know about you and how fucking <laughs> up-to-date I am about your life. <laughs> Friend of the year right here. <laughs> yeah, Stephen M. Kelly, all as one word. That's my main channel where I, I do... I, I'm terrible at updating it, but uh, I, I, but when I he do... Does, when he does, <laughs> you don't need I make it pants. count. You don't need your pants. Just take them right <laughs> off. You're going to ruin them. With your with your erection, just in case I wasn't clear enough, <laughs> you're going to be aroused. Uh, anyway, uh, what was the other thing I was gonna say? Um, yeah, here here on the Chase Face Show Ramble podcast, we like to keep it so laid back and so chill. We don't even remember our friends' names or their channels. We just that's just how le that's how little of a fuck we give. It's just Nirvana. <laughs> Absolutely. There's no need for those those <laughs> trivial things like names and references. Yes, just... <laughs> this has been fun. We should do this again sometime. Okay. Anyway, so yeah, Stephen will probably make an appearance in the near future in some of my videos, and I look <laughs> forward to having him, and thank you for listening. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Steve and I would both, both like to say um, farewell and thank you for listening. Yes. <laughs> Anything else you want to add, Liam? Remember... To breathe. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't have said it better myself.